Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Srimad Bhagavatam. Welcome back to the farm. Welcome, everybody. Woo. We're just getting out of our COVID haze. You feeling better today? I'm taking it slow. You know me, Kostuba. <laughs> slow and steady, they call me, like a turtle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I move like a turtle, but I'm moving. I'm moving. But you know what? Okay. I'm taking this as a Krishna's divine plan to finish my book, and I'm finishing it. I'm going to finish this book this month. I'm excited. Okay, but be careful with that, too, because that's like heavy exertion, that kind of concentration. Not, thing. It's not. You know what? I'm, I'm mainly just reading through what mm-hmm. I've already written and just cleaning oh, it up. Okay. And But I will say that when you really write your story and your life story and you realize, like, man, Krishna's been there every moment. And Krishna sent these people every moment to me. And it, it's just like I, I, I can't help but like being like, immersed in like a deep hearted happy gratitude for messengers that come to you to sort of lift you and steer you and drive you and motivate you and it, it, it's been a, it's been a it, it's been incredibly joyous just to go through and edit it edit edit it it edit it edit, 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 edit. that's uh that's how i'm feeling <laughs> okay and you know what mara oh, brought me yeah, over well. s- Mara brought me over some vegan meatballs yesterday. Well, that's a that's that's um, really good to hear that you're wolfing down vegan meatballs. I, I, and then I, 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 I ate back. very very little. I made them for the kids, really set them up for the kids. But I did eat a little. Huh. I did eat a little. Okay. And then good, good. I, I think Don with our Priya is bringing me some so, goodies today. You no, sound just like you're on the broth. rebound. I'm I'm on a, I'm on a slow rebound, but I'm just doing soup and broth really. Can't you tell? I've lost so much weight. I lost like 17 pounds. I know. I know. Look at my skinny head. <laughs> I lose it all in my head. <laughs> I think when I gain weight, my head just swells like a like some type of jelly donut. <laughs> hey, um, what happened with that TED talk that you you recorded? Yeah, I got did you Mara, did you know I was asked to do a TED talk? Yeah, I heard that. It was uh it was cool. It was one of those things I can brag to my mom about. Because she's not proud of me for anything. Does she know what a TED Talk is? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. But um, I, I, I did it, and then I got hit. I, I did it at the 11th hour while I was traveling. Didn't like the way it came out, and we redid it in Denver. But, you know, because of COVID, they don't let you do them live now. You have to record them. So I did right. it. I, I think I'm going to post pieces of it. But um, there were some good takeaways. You want to know the theme? I thought the theme was very uh Well, first relevant. of all, has it been released it hasn't been officially released. When will it be officially released? I don't know. I'll let you know. But I think soon. All right. Truthfully, I recorded the damn thing, and I just, like, I've been in COVID, like, COVID crazy. I just don't know where I am. But um, uh, anyway. Uh, What's the theme? Uh, the theme is very good. How do you find lasting happiness mm-hmm. in a temporary world? Lasting happiness in a temporary world. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. In a question. world where at any minute an anvil can drop on your head, you know, where the where the, the, the floor can fall out from underneath you, where you can you can get chronic sickness or a broken heart. How do you find happiness when all these things at any minute could just sort of dismantle your reality, your stability, or uh, um, uh, the, the pillars that are sort of holding you together? How are you supposed to find happiness when you know that at any, at any turn, uh, you know, there's something could be right around the corner? So that and was sort you, of the theme. You summed that up in 20 minutes? Is that what the TED Talk is, like 20 minutes? Yeah, so I think I did it shorter, like 16. Okay. It had to be between like 12 and 18 minutes or something. And so, yeah, I went through and I went through my um, I, I told how that, that that was like sort of a driving desire in my mind. It was like an ongoing uh, sort of like uh, anxiety that I had as a child, as a teenager, because as a teenager, I had that, you know, that my young success in music and then mixed with my father who, you know, who's just like automatically like all of a sudden went into a coma which is, you know, a coma is weird. It's like, are you a lot? It's like There's a no state, closure. Right? It's, it's, it's no, it's like a stuck. state of unbeing yeah. where it's like, is this person that I love dead or is this person that I love alive? And right. it was, it, it was, it, 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 you're just sort of like left there, not even knowing how to react. Do you love, because if you've seen a person in a coma, their eyes are moving, they're looking around. So you're thinking, well, are they recognizing me? They're showing no other signs. He can't hold my finger. And so anyway, when you blend some type of material good fortune with incredible disaster, like the pillars of your life have just now crumbled, it just leaves you in the state of like, what the hell is life about? What am I supposed to do with all this? How do I process this? And so that was sort of became my drive and sort of a, uh, a current to move me forward, maybe a catalyst, say, in my spiritual life. <clears throat> and of course, you know, those are, those are great blessings. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for all those things. And uh, that's what you talk about in the TED Talk? Well, that's how I started talking about it and how it, how it drove me to uh, accelerate my spiritual you told path. A personal story from your own life. You shared something. Yeah, I, I, I shared that. And then I talk, I, then I, I made it very practical. Like like some like six practical takeaways that I learned just from living with monks for Those about the six you know, pillars. It, they're not the six pillars, but they're they're six interesting little nugs. <laughs> right. Or five, I think it was five, maybe. Are you going to share them now? If you want, I'll give you one. All right. I mean, you hear me talk about this stuff a lot, but they're still really they really they really ring true, and they're one of those things like that if you. Uh, you know, you know, you're a teenager. You need some good direction and advice. Um, our, here, the big one was uh, a big one. The first one was our worth is not our stuff. Our worth is our contribution. Our worth is not our stuff. In a culture that we've created, stuffness, the importance of stuff and collecting stuff, finding your identity with your stuff, um, finding your personality with my career with my car with my home with my hair with my beauty with my strength with my athletic ability with my charisma with my talent that's not you that's your stuff your real worth is what you do with what you got and and that and we see that in bhakti that it's not what we got it's what we do with what we got it's like how we, how are we going to direct all the gifts we have and that's where we find some type of a deep puzzle piece connection within our heart, you know? Um, and that's what bhakti yoga is. It's a, it's a, it's a, the yoga of love, meaning loving devotion. So that's, that was a huge one, especially in a culture where we, we value stuff. That was a big takeaway. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to the Ted talk. Let us know when it's out. I will, man. I think I'll release little segments of it. Oh, but that reminds me, by the way, I spoke last night, uh, for, for, uh, like a program in South America. I think it was what? Called- but Bhakti Kapsula. Bhakti Kapsula? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bhakti Kapsula. I think it means like a capsule of Bhakti or something like that, but it's like a, a group that gets together. But uh, it was recorded. Uh, you know, I spoke in English and it was translated to Spanish. But it's all about Bhagavatam, like what makes Bhagavatam special. 
And um, I'll I'll post that today on uh, on pay for Patreon members. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, you know what's been nice, Sekostub, hmm? in all this uh, COVID jumble, is every night me and uh, Bunky and uh, what are you two little, over there? My two little boys. We yeah. sit around the altar and we chant the string of Kavachet together. Where's the altar in, in your in your home now? It's it's always moving. <laughs> it's always moving right now. Right now, I've kept it right by, beside my bed because okay. I've I heard this lecture that says we want to keep Krishna's lotus feet on our head. <laughs> so I've been sleeping with my head right towards the altar. Um, right. So and I so moved it like sort show. of right by my bed. So anyway, we sit around beside my bed in the evening time, and we and my 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 little seven year old offers incense. And um, it's like the most sober thing he does all day. Um, <laughs> okay. He just sits. And now it's so beautiful to watch me. He takes it like dead seriously. When he's not punching we, people. He does punch a lot of people on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mara's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Punches me. <laughs> um, but anyway, and then we all chant in Shringa Kabach, and it's like the most grounding thing that we do. And um, it's been it's been really nice ritual. Shringa Kavacha is from Bhagavatam, right? It's prayers to Lord no, Shringa from, from the Bhagavatam. It's, <laughs> from the, it's from the it's from the it's from one of the Puranas. Oh no, the, I'm thinking of the Narayan Kavacha. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Kavachas out there. Kavacha means yeah, like Kavacha, a shield. A shield. Yeah. Nice. Speaking of Kavachas, you know who sent me this really nice Kavacha? You know, they, 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 it's called a shield. The prayer could be a kavacha, but sometimes we see around our neck people wear these you put um, amulets, amulets with prayers in it. But uh, kavacha designs, k a v a c h a designs dot com. It's Jai Shri Triola who did chant camp with us, with you. But she sent me this beautiful kavacha. If you guys are looking for these nice sacred jewelry. And you could put sacred dust in it or sacred. I'm going to put sacred dust in it from Govardhan Hill. Um, and, uh, and first, I'm going to offer it to my, on my altar. But check out her website. She's got great, great artistic, yeah. beautiful jewelry there. Kavacha Designs. Okay. It's a little, little plug. A little plug. All right. You ready, Raga? I'm ready for some more vegan meatballs, Mara. Come on. <laughs> I'm ready to take Mara to the next, to the next level. I thought you were moving slow here, Rogan. It's just like I think she got think she's you, got you, a she's got a package of vegan cheeses. Oh. And we've got to brand these things. We'll call them wisdom cheese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wisdom. We might vegan have to work on the name and, a little. Yeah, okay. We've got to work on that name, but uh okay. Where are we at? Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chaiva Narotamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojaya Mudiraye. Before we said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Anchinar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, and Bhagavati Yatama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. In loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Mudatam Nena Tazmai Shi Maha. I've been born in the darkness of ignorance, and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances, obeisances at their lotus feet. Nice. You know what? We should make the Wisdom Sages cookbook. Mara should put it out. We should get a good one of you guys or a great photographer out there. Let's do this, Mara. Let's take it up a notch. What do you think, Mara? Man, let's do it. <laughs> right. She agreed. Yeah. This is going to be the new Wisdom Sages Retreat Center, the uh, Super Soul. We're, we're doing, going through a I whole... Like I like I'm that. serious. We're going through a whole rebranding of Super Soul. It's, yeah. it's part of our new births, Kostuba. I'm, I'm all for it. You know, as a matter of fact, I was just thinking today, you know, I helped design a course called the Bhakti Lifestyle Training. And I have like all of the, the whole workbook and everything all laid out there. I think that's the kind of thing we could teach at, at, at 
super soul or whatever you're going to call it with the rebranding, right? People could come, spend a month, go through the whole training. I'm, I'm with it. I'm, I'm totally with you. I think, you know, I had this idea for like 20 years about a family retreat center yeah. and it, it, it played that role. It rode that out and it's over. That is sort of over now. Now it's going to be an academy, I think. And I think that's how we're going to rebrand the whole damn thing. And I think uh, it's a it's a great time. Like when you and I were younger, we would go to Vrindavan and we'd study Vedic scriptures. I mean, you just immerse yourself for yeah. Spend some time. Uh, um, we did it. We did it for a month. We could do Usually you could a do month it at a time. Two weeks. Yeah. You do two weeks. Do it a month. Get an ashram experience. But mm -hmm. sort of like in this case, it could be a modern ashram experience where you feel like yes, I've got some valuable tools to bring into my life. I've had the sangha. I've had that sweet taste. I've had a festival. I've had you know what I mean. And and, and you walk away with some with some great s skills. You know what people are on chat board is responding to this. They want it. We're ready. Yeah. Jennifer says, and farm animals. Sure, <laughs> you get to ride the sheep around too. <laughs> Karuna wants to come. She's jumping up and down. Yeah. So anyway, this, this I'm I'm excited for rebranding of all this stuff. Yeah, I think going into the spring and and uh, summer next year, let's get this up and running. Totally in, Mara, head chef. You and, and Dominic are Priya. That's the kind of thing where, like, it could be going like for a whole month, but then, like, on the weekends, we can open it up to people in the area to come for like special programs in the evening and stuff like that. Sheep riding, perhaps. <laughs> Sheep races. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's yes. do that. That's important. I think that's Get really banjo important. mic down here. We'll be whittling stuff creating musical instruments out of oak trees. Well, you know, I should share, you know, we earlier, you know, a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, I mentioned that we we're going to start these discussion groups mm. and tied to that was going to be this, you know, team of professional counselors to drawing, you know, what are the most important issues. And so we're getting that started. And just, just to let people know <clears throat> about it, we, we had planned to cap it at a hundred people, but it went up to about 150 and we capped it right there. And and now we're in the process of finding the group leaders, so we're reaching out to, to people right now, and uh, hopefully, sometime in early November, we'll actually kick it off. Mara, so, will you be my group leader? And, and so, um, my hope is that if we get that going now, and if in the spring and the summer we get this academy kind of thing going on at Super Soul, it's really giving people opportunities. You know, because if you listen to Wisdom of the Sages, you're out there maybe somewhat isolated in your bhakti practice maybe your bhakti practice is new to you you know will there be this support you know support um places you can find support and training uh that'll be really mm. valuable you know online and in person as well maybe we're gonna all have to move together okay to right start right. my commune fantasy <laughs> 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 what happened to the old COVID, Raghunath? <laughs> okay. I was born to live in communes. Right. I am a full-blown cult guy. You're a communist. <laughs> I'm definitely not a communist. I'm just a commu commuter. All right. uh, yeah. Let's focus here. We already did the prayers. Yes. I'm ready. What text are we on here? Well, we are... Canto 3, chapter 25, text 36. Text 36. Upon seeing the charming forms of the Lord, smiling and attractive and hearing his very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses all other consciousness. His senses are freed from all their engagements and he becomes absorbed in bhakti. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he attains liberation without mm. separate endeavor hmm yeah so so it's being described here now the meditation that that in bhakti yoga one's meditating on the form of krishna mm. and uh and, and that that meditation is so powerful it grants one's liberation without separate endeavor Prabhupada writes here in the commentary says here the word vilas is very important vilasa vilasa where are you where are you reading that from from the commentary from the purport the first no paragraph no Okay. A little okay. further down. Yeah. So he says, Vilasa refers to activities or pastimes of the Lord. It is a prescribed duty 
in temple worship. This is important now, right? Because we were talking about temples yesterday, right? That yep. one can go there and it can be a place where one fixes their concentration, fixes their meditation, right, on that form. Yep. But it can also, you know, temples can also be real superficial, right? Yep. Um, that experience can be superficial. So he, he, Prabhupada is saying here, it is a prescribed duty in temple worship that not only should one visit the temple to see the deity nicely decorated, but at the same time, they should hear the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, or some similar literature, which is regularly recited in the temple. Well, okay. sometimes I've had that experience, and maybe you have too. Maybe yeah. you haven't, but I have. Where you yeah. sort of go in there and you go to the temple, but it becomes more like a, a social check-in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a Sunday feast or a some type of gathering, but you're not feeling grounded or connected. And the way I find to overcome all that surface excitement, because it's exciting. You go to a temple, there's people, there's festival, there's flowers, there's a gift shop, there's somebody selling pakoras. You know, the way to beat that is just to sit down, shut up, and listen to the Bhagavatam mm. or listen to some sacred discourse going on. Right. That's the only way to cut through the fluff of this. Otherwise, the temple can be just like a, you know, a little bit of a, a party scene. And it's not why I go there in the first place, you know? Yeah, the, you got, the, again, like the whole point is that you're keeping this place very sacred. But remember, someone asked that question a couple of Saturdays ago, asking about uh, what's the etiquette in the temple when you visit a temple. And the essence of it was you keep that place very sacred, right? You keep the mood in there and the energy in there very sacred. And nothing does that, like hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, books yeah. like that. So, so that's, that's a temple that needs to be, you know, in, um, in Vrindavan, you know, in the, in the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. Our favorite um, temple. Yeah. I mean, definitely right up there. Right. What, you know, what I have a couple of few different favorite temples. You got a couple of favorites. I mean, maybe that's my favorite favorites? of all the favorites, my favorite temples, uh, Krishna Balaram temple. Radha By Gopal the way, I had temple. a pilgrimage dream yesterday. I woke up with a pilgrimage dream. Oh, good. Good for you. We were all on a bus and we are covered in white ash. <laughs> I kid you not. Who's we? Was I there covered in white you ash? Were, yeah, we were all covered <laughs> in like Sadhu's ashes. Okay. And we were just, just driving what through the night mean? on the way to a holy place. What does it mean? I don't know. What does it mean? But it was like the Sadhus were everywhere. You know, I, I went to bed studying up on uh, Char Dham, the four Doms of the Himalayas. I'm going. I'm going. I'm taking Mara. Slow down, Raghunath. Taking mayor, I'm taking some people. We're gonna <laughs> go to the down. four holy places of the Himalayas. Okay. okay. Do we still want to hear the my favorite? Yes, temples? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, no sorry, problem. I got this. That was it. Was a good dream. I had to remember it, or else I would have forgotten it. Okay. So, uh, Krishna Balaram in Vrindavan, uh, Radha Gopinath Temple in Mumbai. Oh, you know, that's one, one of your favorite temples. Favorites. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Bhakti Center. That's home. You know. Yeah. Um, Radharaman Temple in Vrindavan. Yeah. Uh, what else? Radha Govind. Which Radha? Oh, Radha Govind. Bihari Ji! Bihari Ji! Bhanga Bihari, sure, but you're asking me. I know that's on the top of your list, but Radha Govinda Temple in Jaipur. These oh, are some yeah. of my favorite temples. Oh, you know, oh, yeah. I could also add to that uh, the, the Krishna Temple in Udupi. Right. That's oh, that's not beautiful. nice. You know what's yeah. great? I'm looking at Ramit. Was Ramit with us? Maybe when we did uh, right. Udaipur has the Jagadish Mandir. Oh, Jagadish man, Mandir I've done cool. some great. That is a great temple. Yeah, man. This I told these, you about these, that before you, know, you went there. Do you remember that? You're saying like, well, what do you do in, Jai in, in Udaipur? I said, well, there's this big carved stone carved temple right in the middle. And I knew you would like it. I, man, you, I you know, I love Rajasthan. Yeah, I just Rajasthan's love cool. passionate people who are passionate about God. Mm -hmm. I was born to love God. <laughs> we all were. Right? I'm unabashed and unafraid. <laughs> I love God. I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So those are some of my favorite temples. But as Prabhupada, right. he continues to write here. He says, it is the system in Vrindavan that in every temple. Oh, I was saying in the Krishna Balaram temple, you know, there's one devotee. Indra Prabhu, who said, I'm going to keep Kirtan going here 24 hours a day, right? In other words, I'm not, I don't want people to come the whole way to Vrindavan, come, to, come and stand before Radha, Radha Shama Sundar and Krishna and Balaram 
have that incredible benediction in life and for their mind to just be lost in some kind of other nonsense, let's do what it takes to keep the, the, um, the atmosphere in here really spiritually powerful, very sacred. And so he did that through 24 hour kirtan, which meant, well, that's one of those things. It's like people go into a temple and if, you know, and if you're just like a regular person or a, even a person who's sort of spiritual, it's like you get in front of the t temple or in front of the altar and your mind goes, okay, holy, okay, okay, pretty, okay, okay, sacred flowers. And then all of a sudden your mind is like, everywhere else. So you have that kirtan. It just sort of like holds the mind in place. And that is like the gift of that 24-hour kirtan. What to speak of when those guys start rocking it out and i have had and a lot of you guys know because you've been with me to india we show up at that six o'clock kirtan in the evening and we you know if you're new to it you like lose your mind and you're thinking oh my god this is the most momentous thing i've ever seen in my life people losing their minds dancing singing smiling practically crying you know joyously dancing and you've never seen anything like it. And then the first thing you might ask would be like, is this like a, a special, special, is it day? like God's here. appearance day or something? And you're like, no, this is business as usual here. This is just <laughs> what we do every evening while the rest of the world is flicking on Netflix. We are just dancing unabashed, like a, a loop to public opinion. And like that the is the temple in Jaipur as well. Right? Yeah. Every morning. Govindaji. Govindaji is like, they're doing that like, what six seven times a day yeah so so he did that you know like here it's saying you go to the temple and you keep that kirtan going or another way of doing kirtan it's 24-hour kirtan but that also means hearing bhagavatam right like when they stop the kirtan yeah. to do bhagavatam, that's it's still kirtan right still kirtan means to glorify we're gonna still call God. that kirtan so it's kirtan okay so he says in this it is the system in vrindavan that in every temple there is recitation of the shastras of the sacred text even third class devotees right even devotees that are not so experienced and in, in advanced even third class devotees who have no literary knowledge they don't really know philosophy very deeply or no time to read Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita they got busy lives doing other stuff yeah right they get the opportunity to hear about the pastimes of the Lord in this way their minds may remain always absorbed in thought of the Lord his form activities and his transcendental nature yeah this state of krishna consciousness is a liberated state right even though you're in this body even though the modes are still but you're thinking of god you're connected right that's 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 the real liberation here um where was i this state of krishna con is a liberated state lord chaitanya therefore recommended five important processes in the discharge of devotional service what's that called in sanskrit Panchanga Purushartha. No. Did I just make that up? <laughs> but Panchanga is right. Purushartha, yeah. you're going back to yesterday, right? Sorry. Panchanga Punch. Bhakti, right? Panchanga. Panchanga, the five limbs. Five limbs. Anga the, means limbs. Five Punch. Angas. Punch. Punch. Anga. That's where we get the name Punch from. from Didn't know that, Mara, did you? Punch comes from Punch. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. How do you Wiki know? Wiki that. All right. I doubt I'll find it, but <laughs> in any case. Punch comes from punch. How do you like punch in the nose? Yeah, punch because it means British took it. Five, five. Yeah, the five, British five made knuckles. that up. Yeah. Oh, oh, from, oh, the British got it from the, the British neck. got it. I could see that. Yeah. How do you like punch in the nose? All right. So Lord Chaitanya recommended five important processes in the discharge of devotional service: punch, anga, bhakti. Five limbs of devotional service. Five limbs of bhakti. Mara, we're going to turn to you Ooh. now. We're going to put you on the hot seat. <laughs> I love those five Mary, limbs. I love when Mary gets on that hot No, I think seat. I know this one. Yeah, uh, I think she Is this Nam Dam Bhagavatam? Yes. Deities yes. and devotees. See, she's got a way Ooh. to remember it. Nam Dam yeah. Bhagavatam, deities mm -hmm. and devotees. So Nam, Nam Dam means, Bhagavatam. Nam means, well, let's read what, how Prabhupada says it. He says, number one is to chant the holy names of the Lord. And then he goes on and gives the whole Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that's Nam. Nam means name. Obviously, there's a linguistic connection there, Ravanath, right? Did yeah. you see that? Oh, yeah. Nam and Nam. name? Nam and name. And they're very similar, aren't they? So the first one You're is to chant. You're a philologist. <laughs> the first one is to chant the names of. That's a very 
powerful, potent. The, the five punch unga, it means there are many. Actually, 64 ungas are listed in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, right? This important book on the practice of bhakti. But these five are considered to be especially transformational. Especially super, the superfoods. Superfoods, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the first acai. one is nam. They, they are the moringa berries of right. uh, devotional limbs. Okay, so first one is nam. Then Prabhupada says to associate with devotees and serve them as far as possible. <laughs> if you do this in your life, it's very transformative. Number three is to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. The fourth one is to see the decorated temple and the deity. And if possible, number five, to live in a place like Vrindavan or Mathura. Hit okay, the brakes. So. Hit the brakes, my friends. Yeah. You know, I have to tell you something. Christopher Lopez came over as a humble messenger of Mara, bringing over the vegan meatballs. Nice. And, you know, Christopher Lopez, he's a yeah, great guy. <clears throat> great guy, old school yoga student, friend, um, hardcore guy. But um, he was just, you know, and he's a film guy. He's, shoots films for i don't know what the hell he does he used to work for hbo something. yeah but anyway he's just like i was like hey what's going on and he's just like you know i just listen to wisdom of the sages and read the bhagavatam and it's like nothing makes sense anymore it's like <laughs> the bhagavatam has the way of changing everything in your life it's just yeah. like it, it reprioritizes like existence what you consider recreation or fun or it's just nothing's the same any longer what That's can true. you do once you read the bhagavatam once you put it in your head your material life is ruined i apologize i'm so sorry i didn't mean this to do this to you but it's over you stumbled upon to this podcast and now nothing is the same it just happens and poor christopher lopez it's ruined his career What's he gonna do now? Has What's he? he gonna do? No, no, it hasn't. No, but it hasn't ruined his career. It, it, it doesn't ruin it's your ruined career. His material but... ambitions, maybe, right? You know what it does? Because after yeah. you hear the Bhagavatam, you think you because right because you want everything to be uplifting. You want everything to be um, edif edifying and purifying. Mm -hmm. What was our thing yesterday? The edifying, edifying festival, degrading, de degrading, or what did we say yesterday? It was a good thing. Edifying. Edification or degradation. degradation? Degradation. The festival of degradation or the festival of edification? It's all a festival in the material world. The right. edification. And these, these are the five things to put into your festival if you want it to be a festival of spiritual edification, right? Non and and then, I'll, then I'll give a list of all the things you can put into your festival to make it a festival of degradation, okay? Let's, no, we don't need that. Let's, let's stay with this. Monkey's got a no. couple of ideas. No, no. Drag queens. Number two. <laughs> Number two for degradation. Um, okay. So, again, it was this is how you remember. How do you remember it, Mara? Nam, Nam means Dam. name. Dom means? Place, like a holy place. A, a holy place. You know where that's where we get the word domicile. Oh, Dom. This. Domicile. Okay. Nam, it's Dam. a home. It's your home. It's your spiritual home. Okay. And then? Dom, Dom, Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. That's three. Deities. Deities. Devotees. Oh, and then two Ds come later. Ds yeah. and devotees. I want to throw another little bit of Vedic info here. Dom <laughs> yeah. is different than a Tirta. You know, okay. there's like there's like Tirta. Different means ways people are referring to holy places. Yeah, so there's Tirtas where you go to on pilgrimage for purification. Um, like like Prayagraj, where they have Kumbh Mela. It's called that's 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 one of the king of the Tirtas, but it's not a Dom. A dom means it's actually you're actually ch in the transcendental world. Whereas tirtas are placed after many times you take bath there and stuff, you get purified. Okay. Interesting you, bit you, of info. Where did you find this distinction? I'm curious. My many studies, Kastuba. <laughs> my many deep studies. Right. So then it will then it will remain uh, like a, a question mark for me until you come through. <laughs> With a more solid uh, answer for that one. Okay, but thank I you. Thank you. Very for solid. That. Now, now, Shil Prabhupada continues. He says, These five <laughs> items alone. He doesn't believe anything I say. I, I'm, I didn't say I didn't believe it. I said it remains a question mark. That's all. <laughs> you got to back it up, right? But, but, but if you said it, I believe it's most likely true. 
There you go. Okay. These five items alone can help a devotee achieve the highest perfectional stage. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita and here in Srimad Bhagavatam. The third class devotee can also imperceptibly achieve liberation. That third class devotees can also imperceptibly, imperceptibly achieve liberation is accepted in all Vedic literatures. So without making that endeavor, we were speaking about this a bit yesterday, right? To leave family, leave home, leave comforts, pra practice intense austerity, practice um, solitary, you know, isolated meditations or, uh, you know, yogic practices of analysis. Without all of that, one can imperceptibly achieve liberation. Just like when you're eating that meal, we used that analogy yesterday, right? It's delicious. You're eating it because it's delicious, but automatically, imperceptibly, your hunger is going away. And there so, you go. right. So through through connecting the mind to God, particularly in this form of Krishna, which mm. is so all attractive, that imperceptibly one becomes liberated. They they let go of all of their material desires, all their misconceptions. It all disintegrates. Right? The converse is true, my friend. Yeah. One bad. One little bad of association with somebody. Oh, just somebody is just like they just you feel like, well, what's the big deal? I'm open minded and you associate with someone who's just on a bad path. And I tell you, it's a slippery slope. Be careful. All right. You, right? you know what a slippery slope is? You take one little step and it's, ah! next thing you know, you're way at the <laughs> bottom and you don't even know how you got there. Okay. You don't even know how you got there. Careful. But Careful, careful. But let's look at the positive side of it now. Let's look well, at the positive side. That's what you've been focusing on today, the positive, non-dom, Bhagavatam, yeah. devotees, but, but, association with devotees. I was taking it there. Deities, yeah. <laughs> so let's just look at how this... If, okay, it, here are five really important, powerful practices of yoga, practices of bhakti yoga. Mm. How does this system work? And this is the way, and, and I've shared this on the show before, but I'll share it again, that they're just like... Let's break it down into four simple statements here. Okay. okay. One is that happiness, you could even say divine love, is our, through devotional service, is our true nature, right? That's underneath it all. That's, it's, it's, it's who we are, but it's been covered over. How has it been covered over? Statement number two, false ideas impressed within our minds. Ooh. Right. Yeah, and, and we were talking about that yesterday, right? When we had uh, with Henry, with Henry, Henry the uh, philosopher, Henry the French who, philosopher, Henry who was saying that Erickson. we become conditioned, social by, conditioning, grafted on our minds. Right. This is how I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Okay. You so know. it's that social conditioning impressed in our mind, false ideas impressed within our minds, are the cause of our losing touch with our true nature, and therefore we seek happiness externally, right, through external things. All right, so that's our problem. Our computer of our mind has all this false information downloaded on it. How do we deal with that? How do we correct it? What is the Norton antivirus that's going to like, oh, right? Oh, clear it all up. That was good. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Norton antivirus. You're easier to please since you come come back from COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is new, Ragana. It's okay. happier. All right. So the third statement is, the transformative practices of bhakti yoga, like these five in particular, right, are designed to purify the mind through contact with powerful sources of spiritual energy. Nam, Dham, Bhagavatam, Deities, Devotees. These are all very powerful sources of spiritual energy. You bring that spiritual energy into the mind, it purifies it, it transforms it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but the thing is, how how can we make that most effective? Because I chant, but I'm distracted, you know, uh, it, 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 I'm not getting the full transformative effect. That's the fourth statement. The steady flow of transformative energies requires the right conceptions, the right sentiments, and the right lifestyle. Mm. Right? These, are, these, are, these are all help us stay absorbed in these five, uh, receive the full benefit of the five, and experience that sense of transformation. And that's how bhakti works. Magic. Beautiful, right? <clears throat> it is. All right. It is magic stuff. In the same way, in, yeah, in the same way that the, the converse of all that stuff is true. You know, it, I, I like to look at it like a riptide because a riptide is very insidious if you've ever been caught in a riptide. You know, you're just sort of swimming around, waving to your mom, 
next thing you know, next you're like getting know. dragged out to the middle of the ocean. This is material existence. It's just like dragging. Ah, you don't even know what happened. You don't even. And then you're swimming back in and you just can't get in. Then, of course, there's like uh, sometimes the current takes you north and you don't even realize it. And you're way up north. <clears throat> so these the, the, this, this association, Nam Dam Bhagavatam <laughs> devotees, it lift, it can lift you very high. And a lot of us get into this and we don't even realize that um, I, I think maybe perhaps even you and me, when we got into Bhagavatam when we were kids, um, next thing you know, it's like we have a whole new like sounding board to throw different philosophies at and different people's ideas on life when we were teenagers and all we're thinking like, well, what do you think about the eternality of the soul? What do you think about that? We're here for growth. What do you think about God as one? What do you think about, you know, we should control our mind and senses. That was like a new sounding board that we didn't even realize was affecting us, but it was chain. It was, it was challenging every thought that has been programmed into our brain from junior high school, from high school to whatever we grew up with, with our parents. And, and it was like affecting us in a deep way. And without us really even realizing it, lifting us sort of higher. And in the same way, we've had like degrading influences on us as well that sort of uh, have complicated our life. Man, we got lucky. We got into this at a young age. True. But it's right? never too late. It's never too late also. No, it is. It is too late. <laughs> it's very, very late. <laughs> no, it's not too late. It's not too late. You know what they say about pecan trees? Best time to plant a pecan tree, Bunky, right? 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Second best time today. Pecans. I've never heard that before. What a clever little... Piece, little permaculture piece country, analogy. Little piece of country wisdom he shared with us there. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. All right, text 37. <clears throat> text 37. This is a good one. Kapila Dave says... This is a good one. Thus... Wait a second. Thus, thus yeah. because he is completely absorbed in thought of me, the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems including Satya Loka. Mm. Now, we can't even imagine. Like, what's the highest material pleasure you could think of? Even if I say that to you, you'll... Eh, we don't even have it registered in our brain, material enjoyment. We've Because our, our, our enjoyment is so lowbrow, like a bunch of druggies. We don't even get the fact that there is very refined material enjoyment. So he's saying that, Thus being completely absorbed in thought of me, the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems, including Satyaloka. That's the highest planet of all. In the That's universe. the highest planet. That's where we can't... I can't even perceive what that sense gratification would be like. We got no idea. We have no idea. Yeah. It's almost like if all you know is... Mm, what? Uh, Think of something gross and like pleasurable. <laughs> Like, know, like, uh, alcohol, like the, the pleasure of getting drunk out of your mind. Yeah. Hospital food. There we go. Okay. Hospital food. And then Mara comes in with these refined vegan meatballs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or uh, something you've had something like a, a gross soda pop or something like that. And someone comes in with like a fresh squeezed uh, tropical juice you've never had. Well, let's, let's say, you know, those rice cakes that people have. Right? They got no flavor in them. Rice cakes. It's just dry. Yeah. But then someone comes and gives you Utma. No. <laughs> okay. I've been jonesing for Utma all morning. I was like, Bunky, do you not make Utma? I need some hot, savory goody. My wife makes this Utma out of, um, what is it that you make it out of? Uh, quinoa. She makes it out of quinoa flakes. I hate, hate, quinoa. You, I hate quinoa. You would like this. You would like you know this. what? I need some Utma, people. If there's any Utma makers me out, out there, help me, me out. out. You can make it that way on a kadashi. She makes it every kadashi. It's absolutely fantastic. With quinoa what, a Quinoa flakes. Family? Quinoa flakes. Yeah. Man. Divya, it's, a divya, just, it's a divya recipe. It's really good. Indians just know what they're doing. Okay. In any case, so what the were we point just is, talking about? Okay. We were saying that like, we totally don't even know what to I desire. Thinking, not even that. Like, not Utma, but like you have like that dry rice cake. 
And then you compare that to like something like Ras Malai or some, something very succulent, you know? Yeah. It, we don't even know what don't is know. good because we've never had it. We've had a, a ceiling to our sense gratification and we're incredibly arrogant about our sense gratification. And it's just been limited this whole life. You see, Karuna came up with this. She says ice cream, right? I mean, costume. Yeah. You and me. And I'm going to even like, I'm going to even like rub this in Mara's nose here. Okay. Mara. And, and, and Mara will get this too because she, she's traveled in India, but not that extensively. But you and I have traveled all over India. We've tasted foods that the world's never tasted. It's like ever go pull into one of these villages and like, I've never ever had this before. I've never had banana leaf flour. I've never had it. It's crazy. It, 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 I've never had lotus root sub G before. It's like I've never had it. Okay, what's your point? <laughs> My point is there's tastes and flavors and spices that the whole world is missing out on. I don't know what my point was with that. Okay. My point is there's flavors. My point is here, we're talking about that. We can't even de desire these things because we've never even had them. But um, as, you, as you open yourself up to this culture, it gets even your sense gratification gets higher. Even your sense gratification gets higher. He does not desire the right material perfections obtained from mystic yoga. So he doesn't even want that. We don't even get that. We don't even get that. People want mystic perfections like that would be great to have you think you're happy no yeah. you're not happy you From need mystic powers yeah yeah you have you material just... perfections when you just want something i want my utma it just appears property city yeah bunky drive me a little crazy get out of here i just float him out the room come back here bunky <laughs> float him back <laughs> uh okay let's okay. take this verse again all right thus because he is completely absorbed in thought of me the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems, including Satyaloka. He does not desire the eight material perfections obtained from mystic yoga. See, I'm so low that I don't even want them, but I probably would. Not does, uh, nor does he desire to be elevated to the kingdom of God. Yet, even without desiring them, the devotee enjoys, even in this life, all the offered benedictions. Okay. So the pure devotee gets them all anyway. Yeah, He doesn't want them, or she doesn't want them, but they get them. They can it's, have all material, like Hanuman, has them all. Yeah, sure. Because they, they, the they have a happiness that's deeper. That's the point. And, and, and so what, what Kapil Dave's doing here is he's trying to Not just to that, them. not just that. They actually have all mystic powers, too. They, but they, they do have a, have a happiness, happiness that's deeper. deeper. I get that. That's my point. They do, they do, but they also have all mystic powers. We've already established that. <laughs> but I'm saying because they have a happiness that's deeper, they're not particularly interested in that. Right. Right. You get them. It, yeah. It's like that story with Sanat and Goswami. You know, his treasure. What was his treasure? You know, like, what was it that some kind of pilgrim came to him? Right. He was in oh. Rikavan. And he's like, hey, you got. Do you have that Chintamani stone? Yeah, he was magical told that he stone. A, a magical stone that can fulfill all your material desires, right? Yeah. And uh, so he, he heard Sanat and Goswami had one. That was his that was his reason for approaching, you know, a, a saintly person. He had a material desire. I, I want that my God, he's got that Chintamani stone. You know You think there's do you think that's like a real story? Is there are there Chintamani stones? I think like it's a real magical story. Yeah, but like let's not let's let's just, we're just in the magic a pebble. We're, we're just trying to make a point. Let's let's not get diverted. Okay. So so he comes and he asks for that that stone, and and how does Sanat Goswami respond? He says, "Oh yeah, you want that magical stone? Yeah, it's on that garbage heap over there yeah, in the in compost. Imagine so he, keeping your magical stone in the compost. It's like he didn't even care about it, right? So so the, he goes there, he grabs a stone, he realizes that my God, I got this stone, I'm fine. and he, and it's working, you know." But then he begins to think, well, hold it. If he had this stone and it meant nothing to him. He must have something bigger, a bigger stone. There's got to be something better that he's got over there. Yeah. What's he so hiding? Then he came back. And then what happened? Um, he said, yeah, well, you want that? Yeah, I got something much better. You want it? He's like, yeah, yeah, I want it. You sure you want it? Yeah, totally sure I want it. Okay, here's what you got to do. You got to throw away that first magical stone. There you go. There you go. <laughs> he's like, all right, great. You're going to give me a gigantic magical stone? 
of sorts. <laughs> yeah, so that was it. Imagine that challenge, right? So, okay, this he's a saintly, trustworthy person. There's no question about that, right? And he, he, he's got something beyond this incredible material facility that you just thought was the, it, until very recently, you just thought would be like the ultimate thing to have. And now he's saying, oh, yeah, there is something much better than this. And I do have it, and I'm willing to give it to you. Great, give it to me. But if you're gonna, the only way that you're going to be able to accept it is if you take that stone. Take, take all your material desires, right? Take Wrong all your material way. facility and, 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 and in your heart even, right? Like he had to physically take that stone and throw it in the river. But like it means that if we want that higher, true spiritual happiness in life, which which is only found through divine love, we have to be willing to 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 purify ourselves of all these other desires. We have to let Take go. Take that of magic it. stone and throw it in the river. Yeah. So he 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 he. That's that was his challenge to to to. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a that that's like a you know a very graphic kind of demonstration of the depth of one's faith, right? Mm. The faith in in Sanat Goswami that he does have something that's beyond it all. The depth of one's material faith is that what you meant? Well, I'm saying the the depth. Oh, the, the depth, the depth, the depth of one's of, faith. Yeah, the yeah. depth of one's faith is like, you know, what am I? What am I willing to let go of, you know, to grab onto this? And so, what we see in this verse, it's it's Kapil Dave's way of clarifying what bhakti really is, you know, mm. by becoming absorbed in thought of God with you know these with these sentiments of love that the devotee doesn't desire the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems. In other words, nothing in the material realm interests them, right? They do not, des that's what the karmis aim for, right? The, 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 what the four Vedas teach is if you can, you can cultivate good karma, you know, by following the teachings of the Vedas, elevate yourself to the higher planets and enjoy on a level that, that's way beyond what we even know here on earth. And then the, the next thing is what the mystic yogis are interested in. Not the yogis that are interested in connecting with God necessarily, but the yogis that want to get powers from yoga. Yeah. So he, he says, they do not desire the eight material perfections obtained by the, from mystic yoga. Right? The, these kind of magic tricks that you can do. You know? So they're not interested in that. And then it says, nor do they desire to be elevated to the kingdom of God. Generally, at this point, you would have put in like, nor do they desire mukti, liberation, and, and that probably kind of means that here too. You know, that that freedom from the material world, exit from the material world into the spiritual realm. They're not I even could, interested in that. I could see how you might have to go through those steps of getting mystic powers first to realize, you know what, I don't need these. I could see how some people with a little bit of material desires might be like, you know what? No, I want to levitate. No, I want things to appear out of my hands. No, I want to become really tiny. I, I, I could I could understand that. I could understand in the same way you've seen people who become materially successful only to realize like, yeah, it's a big deal. All right. Mm. I can I can drive any car. I can live anywhere. Big deal. And then they always say something like, well, it's a game. My business is just a game. But but they have to like get to that point of on a spiritual path. You have to get to that point of materially exhausted, right? And um, probably all these like little branches of mystical, metaphysical info insight is just really to exhaust ourselves to get to this point of sarva karna karnam. Krishna is the uh, Krishna is the cause of all causes and all that is. Nothing else will fulfill my heart. You know, that's from the Brahma Samhita that you're quoting that, right? Yes, I Sarva am. Karna. A little uh, Karuna, she's saying that she knows the Chintamani verse from, from She the knows Samhita. everything. Should we ask her? From Let's her previous hear it. life. Let's hear it. On mute. Hey, Karuna, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you can chant that verse. It's a very beautiful verse that's describing the spiritual realm. The, the, yeah. From the Brahma I Samhita. actually know a lot of Brahma Samhita. Let's see. All right. You got that first one, like Ishvara? Six, six or seven verses. How about that know, first one? Do you Ishvara. know the one that Raghunath just quoted, Ishvara Parama Krishna? Yeah, I know it. Okay, let's, let's hear, hear it. it. Ishvara. Mm -hmm. Ishvara Parama Krishna, Satchatananda Vigraha, Anadi Radhe Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. Boom. Cute, cute meter, 11. Boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Number two. Chintamani Prakara Sadma Sukalpa Riksha Laksha Vritesh Surabi Rabi Palayantam Lakshmi Sahasra Shatasam Rama Sevayanam Govindamani Purusham Tamaham Bajami. That's All right. really great. You've learned six of those so far from the from the Brahma Samhita. I don't know. More a little. Yeah, great. Well, you're right. really doing good. Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I used to have to uh how did I do it? I, I used to bribe I know, my six children. Or seven. With, uh, various okay, six or seven. toys. I have to count properly. <laughs> okay. All that, right. Well that that I'll read the translation for that one. That is I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, yielding all desires, and abodes built with spiritual gems. That's the Chintamani right there, right? Surrounded yeah. by millions of purpose trees, always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of Lakshmis or gopis. Thank you for that, Karuna. Lovely. Oh, look Lovely. what time it is. It's time. It's 9.02. It's time, it's time for the vegan meatballs. It's a meat, meatball no, breakfast. It is time for takeaways, Mara. All right. Our worth is not our stuff, it's our contribution. Bingo! Listen to Shastra to cut through the social party fluff. Social oh, yeah. party fluff. Keep the <laughs> temple sacred. Yeah. Yep. Bhagavatam reprioritizes everything. Yep. One bad association is a slippery slope. Slippery. Mm -hmm. Material existence is a riptide. <laughs> Throw away uh, the magical stone to receive something higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Karuna sent us one that's don't eat ice cream, eat bhakti love. Oh, okay. Very good. Right. What about, no, we didn't have anything about the um, Nam Dam Bhagavatam or anything like that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know how to get that in there. Oh, that one slipped okay. by. All right. No problem. Well, that's it for today. Are you ready? Yeah. There's that's a bhakti great. recovery that's group meeting at noon today. And oh, then yeah. um, this Saturday for Patreon members, Tina Scheid is offering a breathwork workshop Saturday at 11 Breathwork workshop, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Sunday we'll be interviewing our friend Simon Haas, brilliant scholar, excellent author, Bhakti Yogi. It's Sunday. I think that'll be something to look forward to. Sunday, yeah. Oh, that is good news. Thanks, author, everybody. We're going to discuss his book, uh, The Book of Dharma, which is about how to make good decisions. Oh, I need that. I need that. I think we all need that. I think we could all use that, a book of good decisions. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everybody, being here, my community, my support, my tribe. You guys show up on a regular basis. And it's impressive. Incredibly impressive. Thanks, you. Children of all ages. Let's get our dance on, everybody. Not me. I'm just going to go like this. Hey, if you like what we're doing, this is a community supported podcast. I don't care if you're three years old, you can contribute something. Go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. Give a monthly contribution to keep our little boat floating. This boat's been floating now for like, uh, what? A year? Two years? Two yeah, years of a boat ride? Two years now. It's like the love boat. This is the love boat. Who would I be okay. on the love boat? Would I be Captain Stooping? <laughs> or would I be Gopher? 